So this is where we left off. But nobody is listening. Nobody is listening to beer or sword. How dare they? Well, that's just because we didn't actually add in that one line of code. Or to two lines of code. You remember them, right? Inventory item display dot on click plus equals a delegate. Yeah, you know, we've done this before. Yes, yeah, the same thing. But you have to remember, always, always, always unsubscribe. And here in handle on click, we can do whatever we want. Debug.log. Let's uh, spell things right. That's how you spell that word. Yep, works. So when we click on an item, we're going to be throwing things around. So if I were to click on armor, I would want it to replace that armor. If I click on dress, I want it to replace this armor, and the armor gets shunted back into the inventory. But that would mean I would have to update this visual and update this visual. How do you go about doing that? Well, one way to do it is to use a lot of code. You can have a lot of code where, for example, if I click on the dress, then the equipment actually the equipment screen actually responds with an okay I successfully equipped that so I'm gonna update my visual but that's a bad way to do it the reason it's a bad way to do it is because of this guy over here there are times when you're going to have multiple visuals or some kind of more complicated thing for example if it's a multiplayer game you might have a visual on your side and a visual on someone else's side uh, or you might have like a, a cached sprite picture of the character uh, that you use for a, you know a trading cards or something. In all of those cases, you're going to want all of those things to know that the hero has had his equipment updated. Similarly, if the inventory changes, you don't just want to tell the inventory to regenerate its visuals, um, the inventory display to regenerate its visuals. You're going to want to tell every inventory display or anything that cares that the inventory has changed. And that way you can do things like uh, recalculate load balancing, do event calls based on something that's just entered the inventory, uh, trade out the in or uh, send out the inventory changes to other people on other servers. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. But the best way to do that is not to write special case code, it's to do the exact same thing we have been doing. An event. So if we want to do an event like that, we just got to add it to the right spots. So there are two places that we're going to need to have an event for, and that would be the hero and the inventory, and they need the exact same event. They need an event that shouts that they've changed. The question is, is this going to be a static event, or is it going to be a, a, an object event? So if it is a static event, then when you sign up for it, you're going to get every inventory that ever changes or every hero that ever changes. They're all going to contact you. On the other hand, if you sign up for a specific inventory or a specific hero, you only get events related to that one thing. In most cases, it's not really going to matter which way you do it, uh, but we've already done the way that uses the static approach. And I think that that's probably a good way to stick to it for now to keep things simple. Um, there are some limitations that we'll deal with later, but for now I think that'll work. So you might remember we did this for the close that we did this for the inventory item display. These two functions here, these two lines of code, just cut and paste them. But we do need something slightly different. First off, it's not an inventory item display delegate; it's just an inventory delegate. And rather than passing an inventory item, we want to pass an inventory. And here we say inventory delegate and on change. So this now is a static event that any and all inventory objects will call when they have changed. And that's important to us. That will allow us to monitor for changing inventories. We have to pass the inventory along with the call if we want to know which inventory did the change. And since this is a static event, that's really important to us. If we were going to make it so that this wasn't static, we could get away with making it with no arguments at all, because you'd already know what inventory had changed, the specific one you signed up for. But we are using static, so there is no specific one you signed up for. You, you signed up for all inventories. But we never call it. So when do we want to call it? Well, we want to call it when our items change. Well, the real thing you want to do is you don't want to have it so that items is directly accessed. 
you want to allow the object to handle that for you. Uh, you could set up some kind of uh, complex getter and setter, but it's probably easier just to uh, use a function. Let's go ahead and do a check for null. Null checking is good. If item equals null, then return. Items.add item. Oh, I see that monodevelop has decided I should put returns after every line now. Interesting. Uh, keep that in mind, monodevelop. Items.add item, and if unchanged does not equal null, then unchanged.invoke. Come on, you. Yes, I know. I have to go into the settings and make um, monodevelop stop doing stupid stuff, don't I? Fine. I'll do that off screen, obviously. So now our inventory can tell us that it's changed. Of course, we don't want to just add to our inventory. We may also want to delete or remove. We're not really deleting it. If item equals null, return. If item, uh, if items dot contains item. So let's put a knot in front of that. So if we don't have the item in our inventory, we're not going to remove it. Pretty basic. If we do have the item in our inventory, we'll say items dot remove item, and we will say this exact line here. Easy as pie. Over here in inventory display, all we want to do is sign up for that. There you go. Um, always remember, unsubscribe. And what do we want to do when we handle unchanged? But we don't always want to prime our inventories, do we? If this dot inventory equals inventory, prime our inventory. There we are. Wait, we forgot to pass it. Sorry, that would have been an error if I'd let it fly. We're supposed to pass it this, otherwise it won't. It won't work. That's okay. So if what if the inventory that changed is our inventory, then regenerate it. So now we have a situation where if we add or remove from an inventory all of the inventory displays that are currently in existence will go ahead and respond to that. And if you have another sort of thing like a, uh, an inventory networking handler, you can also sign up that and it will handle it. Or if you've got something that calculates out weight or makes farting sounds whenever you acquire new items, all that stuff happens as well. So over here in the equipment screen, let's just make this actually remove the item from the inventory. So inventory party dot inventory dot remove item shall we see what happens let's go ahead and see what happens oh look at that we're getting multiples so the issue here is that when we regenerate we don't delete the old ones and this is a thing I, I thought uh, I wasn't sure what was going to come up it's coming up today we create all of these inventory items, but we never bother to delete the old ones if there are any. Now there are two basic ways of deleting the old inventory items. One of them is to keep track of all the ones you create and then delete them. The other one is to simply clear out all of the children in our target transform, which is easier and that's the way we'll do it. So uh, for int a equals zero, a is less than target transform dot child count, a plus plus, let me say destroy target transform dot get child a dot game object. I actually don't know. I think you can. I think you can just tell it to destroy the transform and it'll work. That's better. Well, that's 10 minutes, so in the next episode, we'll go ahead and make it so that instead of simply being deleted from the game world, it's actually added to your inventory over here, your equipment slots, and then whatever is in the equipment slot is put back in your inventory. Then we will have a fully functional inventory system. Won't that be fun? If you have any questions about this episode, let me know below. I'm still getting back on top of the horse after a computer disaster and a pretty bad cold. 
So I might not be making 100% sense, but let me know. And uh, see you next time.